As stated, MIM is capable of achieving high density with complex design metal components, serial production. However, as long as we use a mold for stable production, there are some impossible designs such as shown in the picture. It's possible to design and tool some shape, but importantly, we need to demold the injected green body after each injection. Therefore, if there is an obstructing part which is impossible to move, we cannot demold. The reason why it is impossible to mold is shown in this video. If the internal structure of the angled pipe is straight, like this one, it's possible to demold the sliding part. So if you understand the mold, yeah, you can imagine. And when the pipe is curved like this, the curved part will obstruct the green part and it's impossible to demold the green part. Therefore, to increase the design freedom, one time or disposable resin mold is added, which we sometimes call SP mold, sacrificial like plastic mold, to the mold, and then MIM feedstock will be injected. Now, this is a chart that you might have seen. So this is a standard MIM process flow review. I think if you attended our previous webinar, you've seen this. So first we purchase this metal powder that is adequate for our process and mix it with our original binder system. It is said that shear stress should apply to achieve uniform feedstock and each metal powder is covered by the binder. To maintain the uniform injection molding quality, it requires a process of pelletization. Those pelletized feedstock are installed in the injection machine and the desired shape is formed. And then this is the green part. Some of you probably don't know what it means, but green part is part that is injected before debinding and sintering. So in the debinding process, the majority of the binder and the organic components are decomposed. Since we are using one step furnace that is capable of both debinding and sintering in a chamber, there is no need to handle the post debinded part that is called the brown part. This is very brittle. And in some other MIM companies, there often is a separate debinding furnace and a sintering furnace. And they are using the separate furnaces to avoid contamination and to increase productivity. When the components come out from the furnace, we gain the shrinked sinter part, or some call it silver part. So this is a yeah, final part in the MIM process. So this is our standard MIM process. Now let's move to the 3D MicroMIM process. The only difference between MicroMIM and 3D MicroMIM is whether to use disposable plastic mold called SB mold or not. Disposable plastic mold will be molded separately using first mold. That means we have a mold to create this shape, like this kind of shape. So this mold will be set into the second MIM mold before closing the mold. Thus, each time the disposable mold setting is required and the feedstock over mold, the disposable resin mold, and form the required design. The MIM molded green parts are sent to the debinding and sintering furnace to decompose the organic components completely through the debinding and sintering process, and we will gain the sinter parts with desired structure. In this case, this internal structure like this. So we will show some application example now. So the first one is a nozzle, as you can see. Nozzle, this one, this nozzle has a complex internal flow structure that you can see now on the video. Yet the overall size is just 12 millimeter. Therefore, the wall thickness is only 0.2 millimeter. And this thin wall design will be very difficult to process in other metallurgy methods, 
such as lost wax or machining and welding, with maintaining that stable quality for mass production. The next one is yoke core. This core size is around five millimeter in diameter. It might be possible to process by machining. However, stable zero production can be difficult. In some conventional mean process, if this column capital part does not exist, it can be possible to mold with some slides that split the mold core to the mold. That is in case they have good mold designing and tooling skills to manufacture mold with slides. However, parting line will appear at the pillars. Generally on the pillar part, the copper wire will be winding. Thus no parting line or any surface roughness will be accepted. In that case, it's impossible to process by conventional mean process. The third one is a fan with thin fins. This design does not look too complex from the mold design point of view. However, the fin parts are thin with a few hundred micrometers. The thickest point is around 300 micron and the thinnest part is just 100 micron. When it is demolding without the disposable plastic core, these thin parts will be remaining in the mold. The thin parts are of course difficult to inject, but also the demolding is difficult, especially in mint feedstock, which is more brittle. Until here, we show our production capability. However, we believe not only the production technology development, but also the measurement technology development is important to assure the quality of our small and complex metal components quality. As I mentioned earlier, it's well known that a few millimeter size metal component measurement is quite difficult. Additionally, the previously shown parts with complex internal structure quality assurance was not realistic because a non-destructive measurement system was previously not applicable. However, we have introduced a high resolution X-ray CT to measure the internal and external three dimensions. This X-ray CT is our second generation machine though. The max tube voltage is 225 kilovolt and the smallest spot size is three micron. This X-ray CT machine has a limitation of measurement area of a few centimeters square area maximum 10 centimeters square, depending on the resolution. However, our small component measurement is not a problem. We have been using this machine since 2015, and we're accumulating the experience of small metal component measurement. Using the X-ray CT scanner, we will be able to gain the series of data, and we analyze them to visualize the difference between CAD data and our measured data. This is an example of analyzing a gear. To compare the data to the CAD data, it's required to create an adequate model for gear curve equation. The measurement data will be con converted to comparable data via the model analysis. We are capable of composing the mo model mathematically, thus reliable quality assurance data will be obtained. As shown in the image here, the color scale will show us the issue and we can optimize our process efficiently and provide reliable dimensional measurement. Additionally, if it is required, the assembly simulation, including numeral movement simulation is also available once we have the counterpart components CAM data. This is our latest X-ray CT measurement achievement example. Now we can measure the single micron pores and D50 of 10 micron powder distribution in the green body. From a high resolution X-ray CT measurement data, we optimize the algorithm to observe the pores that are smaller than 10 micron. The left image show a pore size of six micron and the right image shows the metal powder distribution analysis image that we also apply another algorithm to measure. From this image, we can see that there is no segregation of powder distribution. The average metal powder size is around 10 micron, 
Thus, the system should recognize single order microsized diameter metal powders. And that is very close to the resolution limit, which is three micron spot size. Surely it's required to select appropriate parameters, but the analysis algorithm development is also important for achieving even higher levels of our microbean processing technology. Lastly, we would like to share our technology news, which was also uh, yeah, in the last webinar. I believe now you understand our 3D microbean capability, but at the beginning of the project, that means the prototype phase, you also need to invest in at least two molds, as I mentioned, one for the plastic uh, disposable resin mold, and then the MIM mold. And our fine quality mold is not so cheap. Therefore, we could support your prototype consideration with our 3.5D technology additive manufacturing. So if you're not sure about this 3.5D technology, please look at our archive of the, the last webinar because we introduced this detail uh, inviting the uh, manufacturer, Inca's um, CEO. And this technology is called LMM, lithography-based uh, metal manufacturing. So um, yeah, please uh, take a look if you haven't. Uh, yet looked at it or attended the webinar. And we call this uh, our like terminology is 3.5D technology. And it has, of course, pros and cons like all other technology, but it will greatly support your prototype development in some cases. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you would like to have some further detailed discussions with this possibility.